Hey, welcome. It's Brian. Today I wanted to do a guitar unboxing. I haven't done this for a while. The last one I did was the Paul Reed Smith Silver Sky SE. Uh, you know, if people like watching that, I don't know. Occasionally I watch them uh, on my favorite channel, so I thought I'd do one. This has a slight twist because this guitar was delivered to the wrong address. And not only was it the wrong address, but it was a house that had basically been vacated and essentially condemned because there was squatters living in it. Now this house is literally directly across the street. It is now being rebuilt, but no one really lives there. Uh, and they had stolen many, many, many of our packages that were accidentally delivered there. So um, we would confront them and they would deny it or not even answer the door. So luckily someone was working at the house and had brought the box in thinking it was screens for the new windows or something like that and had literally opened the thing completely up. So we'll see it, there's a huge box, then the, the actual guitar box, and I believe he even pulled the guitar out of that box and then realized, oh, this isn't a screen. So uh, I don't know why he did that, but luckily enough, he was nice enough to uh, not take it. He came over to my house, knocked on the door. I had a huge sign on the door that said, FedEx, please knock, I'm home. So I wouldn't miss it. Uh, and he basically said to me, hey, are you waiting for a package? And I go, yes, you know, and pointed at the sign and all of that. And then I proceeded to follow him across the street. He had basically, like I said, put it all back together and taped it and said, to me, you know, I basically opened this completely thinking it was screens for the house, like I mentioned before. And I was like, oh my God, you know, this isn't a super expensive guitar, but I don't know if he dropped it. He could have dumped it out for all I know. Um, and we're going to find out together. So I won't drone on, on and on about this, but I just thought that was uh, the closest I've come to having something that expensive not be delivered and me being out of luck. Hopefully it's something you're interested in. So I'm gonna pull the box over and then we'll see what's in it. Like I said, the guy was nice enough to take it back up and that makes me worried that, you know, uh, that we're gonna open it up and find it not a nice surprise. But he seemed nice enough. He could have easily kept the guitar and I would have never known. Um, so, yeah. Like I said, I, I think I even heard the truck pull up because I have a room that's basically where this is filmed. That's literally second floor and that house I can see from here right now. And so I thought I heard it. I kind of looked out, didn't see the truck. So I was like, oh, okay. So uh, anyway. So the box will kind of not give it away, but you'll obviously know the brand instantly. And that's the upside down <laughs> EVH. So funny story about this uh, shape of guitar. The original one um, came out and I don't know, was it probably like 2013, 2014? I'm not exactly sure when. And uh, I really, really wanted it, but at the time it was 900 bucks. You know, I didn't have that to spare, so I just kind of forgot about it. And over the pandemic, I kind of sold a lot of stuff to acquire things like the Jazzmaster, which I am actually going to sell to be able to buy this. And the model kept kind of showing up on reverb, the one I'm going to talk or the one I'm talking about, but not the one I'm getting as far as the color scheme. And now you go to look for it and it is uh, like $3,000. So $900 guitar, $900 guitar for, you know, three grand is not something I'm going to do. So anyway. So kind of a gig bag. <laughs> kind of looks like he dropped it on the floor. You know, it's a construction site. 
it's just one guy over there working so who knows um, all right <laughs> so wow so this is kind of what they're calling a limited limited edition and the guitar I'm talking about that I originally wanted was the white with the cool Eddie Van Halen pinstriping or that kind of cool uh, pattern stuff he did with tape and then would hand paint it himself. And it was the, the star guitar, what this is called. And he had that guitar and then he put a Dano Electro uh, neck on it, which I think he had switched that neck onto different guitars many times and you know switched them out and all of that and I just loved that shape this shape and I thought I'm gonna buy it if you know I, I'm gonna sell a bunch of stuff to get it but uh, I just wanted one they're basically in black black with gold hardware and then chrome hardware uh, this army kind of matte green which I really dig and then there's like a primer gray so out of all three of those, this is the one I wanted. And funny enough, I think if I really love this guitar and I get sick of the paint job, I'd love to paint it like shell pink. That's kind of would be my ultimate thing to do with it. So um, let's see what else is. And I've never had a pointed guitar like this. And so I'm not even sure if it'll hold me on a stand or, you know, if, if a normal sit stand will hold it or not. So. And cool thing about this, obviously one volume, the uh, kill switch, and then the D-Tuna. The last time I had one of these, I had a Music Man and um, had one of those on it. And super cool device. I'm sure many of you who would watch this know what it does. And Eddie had um, basically designed that or, you know, had the idea and someone designed it. And super super cool uh, thing to do and for today's music and for not necessarily the music I play in my band but music I like messing around with like heavier stuff that's kind of a really cool addition so um, I have it's been a long time since I've had a Floyd Rose um, I have a Strat with the traditional tremolo you know that, that guitar needs a new tremolo that one's not good but I love the guitar uh, the Paul Reed Smith, um, that tremolo is really nice, um, but, you know, obviously not locking. Okay, so, there we go. Oh, we'll see what it sounds like. Well, probably no different than all the other stuff I do, but, all right. So, pretty in tune. Let's hopefully it stays in tune. It's pretty close, but, um, yeah. <laughs> which is pretty great. Uh, I put one in that Jazz Master, and i um, not sure what the deal is, but I think sometimes you have to put a resistor in there because uh, the, the voltage built up or something like that creates the popping sound. And so that one does it a lot. This one does not, which is really cool. Um, <laughs> So I'll probably mix in some of these just for fun to see uh, how it comes through on this video. Uh, thanks for watching this. Um, I'm sure I'll have an update 
on this as I get more and more used to it. I am not going to be able to play it without a strap. <laughs> For me, it is so foreign feeling. But... said it's going to take some time getting used to it i need it <laughs> weirdly probably up like this high um with the chord there i mean that feels better so i have a couple angled chords that i would obviously use but i kind of get when people play v's how you know that that's like most of the um like the Jackson V's have that, their jack up here, and I always thought that was so cool. And uh, to be honest, even, well, I don't know. I think actually here makes the most sense because you just run it straight out. This is the EVH uh, Star Guitar Matte Green Finish. I bought this from Sweetwater. Um, so I think it's going to take some getting used to as far as the body shape. But I think once I get a strap on it, um, I think, you know, I'll feel a lot more comfortable having it sit uh, like maybe this high. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, but I'm super stoked to have something this cool, this unique. Uh, this different than anything I've had before and um, thanks for watching and uh, any thoughts or questions let me know all right have a great day